Good afternoon, everyone. I think we're going to start the next session now on strengthening digital ecosystem for better digital inclusion. If everybody can please take their seats. I would like everybody to sit at the table. So those of you who are staying. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, open forum on strengthening digital ecosystem for better digital inclusion. Thank you to all of you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Irene Potranto, and I'm a senior researcher for the Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto. And it is my honor and pleasure to act as a moderator for this esteemed panel featuring His Excellency Johnny Gerard uh, Plate, Indonesia's Minister of Communication and Information Technology, Mr. Anang Latif, the President Director of Telecommunication and Information Accessibility Agency of Indonesia, uh, Ryan Raharjo, uh, the Head of Government Relations for Google Indonesia. Indonesia, Yossi Mokalu, the chairman of the Indonesian Digital Literacy Movement, or Cyber Kreasi, which is a nationwide movement, and Nena Noakanma, who is a well-known free and open source software activist, community organizer, and development advisor. So this is the order in which they will speak. The purpose of this open forum is to discuss how we can strengthen the digital ecosystem, for instance, through ensuring the availability of high-speed internet access, providing digital literacy education program, and developing platforms and applications that conform to our information, privacy, and security standards to support the realization of digital inclusion. And that is to ensure that information and communication technologies, or ICTs, would provide opportunities for the well-being of people around the world, especially in developing countries like Indonesia and among the groups that have been historically marginalized, such as poor people, people of color, immigrants, and indigenous peoples, all of whom confront social and economic injustice. So each speaker will speak to this topic for five to seven minutes, and I will keep time to ensure that all of you in the room, not just the panelists, will get a chance to speak so that we can keep the open forum as interactive as possible. And please, I invite you to sit closer to the mic so that you can easily make your intervention. Without further ado, I now give, to the floor, uh, give the floor excuse me, to His Excellency Minister Johnny Gerard Plate, who will deliver the first opening statement, followed by opening statements from other panelists. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, this is this English guest, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. As I have early mentioned in my opening remarks at the high-level ministerial meeting, Indonesia is not only building new ports, toll roads, or airports. In addition to the existing digital infrastructure, which is 330,000 kilometer length of fiber optics. 120,000 of BTS and five telecommunication satellites. The government of Indonesia also and will also building a fiber optic extensions network, thousands of BTS in the remote area, and three more multifunctional satellites to fulfill the nation digital infrastructure demand. Many provinces that were once underdeveloped are now benefiting from mobile and broadband access. By 2024, remote areas of the archipelago will benefit from high-speed internet at least 10 megabytes per second. Fast infrastructure development has left Indonesia well equipped to become a digital nation. This is the essence of digital inclusions. We are ensuring that every Indonesian has access to high-speed internet, has access to education programs on digital literacy, 
to facilitate the adoptions of new skills and technologies. We are ensuring that every Indonesian has access to apps or online service platform that improve their lives. This is in 2013, when Indonesia last hosted the eighth annual meeting of IGF in Bali, multi-stakeholders collaboration became the guiding norms of the Indonesian digital ecosystem. Digital literacy is not catching up in time, as some of 100 million Indonesians are set to own a smartphone by 2021. Indonesia also has a very young population, one-third of our populations. We therefore must teach our young generation to only access digital content that is appropriate for them. This will enable them to create, find, access, and use digital content in purposeful ways. By 2035, the demand of digital talent not less than 110 million digital talents. Indonesian government has to do all that possible ways to meet this demand by way of cyber creation, digital literacy, national movement, digital talent scholarship, and the Digital Leadership Academy. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the government of Indonesia encouraged the other government institutions in Indonesia the telco counterpart, as well as platforms and apps provider, to hand in hand to meet such as a high number of digital talent demand. We encourage Indonesians to prepare themselves to the, to the use of internet for their own benefit. Be a smart and clever user. In the use of the internet and the traffic within the internet, Indonesian people must understand their rights and obligations in one side, and the government has to make sure its duty to bring the situation to normal in case of civil disobedience and civil disorder in the community. In short, Indonesia digital infrastructure, internet system, is for the benefit for every Indonesian, for their economy, social, education, and culture, on their day-to-day -day living and for the Indonesian national interest. Thank you for your kind attention. I look forward to many fruitful discussion within this open forum. Thank you. Danke schön. Thank you, uh, Mr. Plate. So the next speaker will be Mr. Anang Latif. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished His Excellency Mr. Johnny Plate, Minister of ICT of the Republic of Indonesia, distinguished speakers, guests. Let me uh, inform you a bit of detail about what already spoken by Minister Minister that we start from knowing about Indonesia. Is there any slide? No? Yeah. As you already know, maybe some of you might not yet know about Indonesia, that Indonesia is the number four biggest population. Yeah? More than 20, 260 million people are in Indonesia. And Indonesia also the largest archipelago country, more than 70,000 islands of Indonesia. I'm in charge in Bhakti. Bhakti is a part of ministry, ICT, which is responsible for providing accessibility, providing not only connectivity, but as well as the to prepare ecosystem yeah, for society as well. And we working, we are funded by the, we call it USO contributions, which coming from the gross revenue of telecommunication operators. Imagine that Indonesia is a big ship that we, our role is to make sure that everyone, Indonesian, 
should be inboard in terms of telecommunication, in terms of internet facility. We, we were starting in 1999, 1999 that we just at the time issued the new regulation telecommunication law which was 20 years ago that the role of deploying telecommunication service were, will be uh, the responsibility of the private sector as well as the state-owned enterprise. However, since our state-owned enterprise, PT Telecom in Indosat, were privatized, that the government since 2006 was responsible for deploying, especially in the area which are not feasible by the business. But the progress was very slow until 2016 that we are starting a huge project, we call it Palpa Ring. Palpa Ring was the, was the fiber optic network connects all cities, connects all municipal. Okay, thank you. Municipals around the country, they are around more than 500 cities and municipals around the country. That now the project was completed since August 2019. Yeah. That the, the broadband services is already deployed around the countries. You can see from the from the map that since 2017. This is the network deployed by the commercial operators. They are focusing on the biggest, on the biggest island like Sumatra and the most crowded island like Java Island. But they don't deploy. Yeah, they didn't deploy until the eastern part of Indonesia. That's why when we develop a power wing, yeah. You can see that we are focusing in the eastern part of Indonesia. We have to enter the market with the operator don't, don't exist at the moment. Yeah. This is how the roadmap, yeah, common for roadmap, how we try to build a digital nation to solve the infrastructure in order to deploy broadband services until the village level. In 2019, we just finished our first task, which is deploy the fiber optic network around the cities. In 2020, we are targeting and deploying 4G services until reaching the all villages around Indonesia. As you as we already know that we have around more than 80,000 villages around the countries. In 2023, we are also targeting having a new satellite, broadband satellite, very high throughput satellite, which can provide inter high speed internet services around the countries. So there will be 150,000 sites comprises of schools, village office, as well as the health center around the countries can have broadband services. It means that all digital connectivity yeah, reaching until schools, yeah, as I mentioned before, could be deployed by the satellite, we call it, uh, which will be deployed in 2023. 2024, we are also preparing another second and third satellite yeah, to provide full service broadband reaching until more than 30 megabit per second per location. Not only that, we are also now starting to develop, we call it new ecosystem to utilize the broadband infrastructure. We believe that we cannot work alone. We have to uh, 
having cooperation with other ministry, having cooperation with university as well as the movement such as cybercracy to maximize all potential yeah, that already already brought by the, our infrastructure. We already had a, many cooperation with all ministries, including Minister of Education, to provide services uh, e-education, cooperation with the Minister of Health, providing services, yeah, broadband services until reaching uh, health center in the village level, cooperation with the Ministry of Finance to deliver some like a credit program, micro credit program, yeah. cooperation with Ministry of Fishery as well as Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs to make sure that the beneficial of the broadband can be utilized by all people around the countries. This is what we call it digital transformation that we already start. We are focusing Start, uh, we are focusing on the village level. We also educate how the people in the village yeah, can accept, can adopt the culture, digital culture, yeah, in a very simple way. When they, when they come, yeah, we educate some uh, like licensing, some like public services. Yeah. We also uh, provide some uh, we call it electoral uh, examination yeah, during uh, the period, uh, study period. This is how we also combine with our SDG, SDG goal, yeah, that we have a direct impact also as well as the indirect impact. This is how we work together yeah, with all components all stakeholders to make sure that not only infrastructure, but how ecosystem can benefit, can maximize the, the benefit of digital. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak Anang. And the next speaker is uh, Ryan Raharjo from Google Indonesia. Um, good afternoon, His, uh, His Excellency Mr. Johnny Plate, Indonesia's ICT Minister, distinguished speakers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name is Ryan Raharjo. I'm Public Policy Manager from Google Indonesia. So I'm really pleased to be here today um, because of the shared belief that um, technology and innovation can accelerate the change and that everyone should have equal access to digital economy. So let me take this opportunity to um, share a little bit of our efforts to improve digital inclusion and digital literacy using best practices, again, from Indonesia. So um, at Google, we basically want to help ensure everyone to have, for everyone has the opportunity to grow and also like to do something great through technology. And to do this, um, in Indonesia, we've been working together with lots of stakeholders, could be like the government, in this case, the ICT ministry, and other ministries in Indonesia, the local CSOs, the local NGOs, local businesses, to expand access to information, to expand access to the internet, and also like to advance digital skills, and literacy and opportunities for everyone. So when it comes to access, I think all of us agreed that um, the internet gives people new ways to obtain information, access to services, and even like earn a living, right? But unfortunately, in uh, many places, simply getting online is also like a challenge. Mobile and Wi-Fi connections sometimes are expensive and also like limited, especially in remote areas. So while the digital economy um, continues to boom, it is also critical that everyone has access 
everyone needs to get access to fast and secure internet connection. So in order to address it, well, we are very glad that the Indonesian government has also like boosted the internet connectivity through the Palaparing initiative. At Google, we also launched like a program called Google Station, which is actually our initiative to provide a free and fast internet access for public in open spaces. And this, this station is um, already launched in a number of countries. And in Indonesia itself, we have installed more than 200 Google Station. The goal is simple. It's just to bring the full speed um, internet access and open internet to as many people as possible. And that is one, the first step, right, access. So when we get the access, what's next? The second round is actually to advance digital skills of the people. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to digital literacy, when there's like internet already in um, a country, people need to get smart decision when they go online. And our goal at Google has been to help maximize the best of what technology has to offer while ma minimizing the risk. So we want everyone, could be like parents, could be teachers, could be students, educators, to have like the knowledge they need so that they can make like smart and um, responsible choices online. That's why we invest heavily in um, digital literacy programs, digital literacy resources, to basically help build a responsible generation of um, digital citizens. In Indonesia, for example, um, to ensure everyone has the tools, to ensure everyone has the knowledge they need to make smart decisions online, we created a campaign called Smart School Online, which was executed by three NGO partners, namely ICT Watch, ECPAT Indonesia, and Sijiwa Foundation. They basically went to several provinces in Indonesia. We, we do have 34 provinces, and they went to like 14. Um, almost 14 cities to train marginalized people on digital literacy. So not only we work with local NGOs and local CSOs, we also like work with the government and also local networks um, to basically to ensure you know uh, this, the, the 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 execution of the program becomes um, realized like um, perfectly. So what basically they did. Um, these three NGOs went to several cities in Indonesia to deliver in-person and in-schools uh, program to help teens, parents, educators to understand best practices for engaging uh, with the online world, explaining how to um, protect their information online, how to avoid scams, how to fight cyberbullying, and also how to spot like this information easily with products that are free online. So they also develop a digital literacy model that has been localized to meet with the local interests and have <laughs> distributed all the literacy module to almost um, 60,000 school community in Indonesia. But then we, we also realized that not everyone can access the materials on the ground. So to overcome this challenge, we created a website. So people, wherever they are, they can just download the materials for free. The materials how to fight against bullying, how to stand up against uh, people who always like giving you bad comments on the internet, how to uh, verify fake news easily by using Google products. So all these products, all this module that we want to make sure highly localized to meet local interests. And this creativity and collaboration um, is a model that we believe we need more of, in not only Indonesia, but also like across the globe. That's why I would like to um, also thank our partners, our NGO partners, for being an inspiring example for this. So apart from supporting digital literacy movement together with um, the movement made by the government, we are also committed to ensuring that local SMBs, small medium businesses, can experience um, the benefits of the internet. So on this note, we also created a free digital skilling program for local SMBs 
basically empowering them uh, with the right skills and tools to thrive in digital economy. Not stopping there, we also like focusing on educating women entrepreneurs to grow, to get like the benefits of the internet. Local SMBs become a very important sectors, um, especially in Indonesia, because they contribute to over half of Indonesia's GDP. And a research made by um, our third party says that SMBs who go online, they actually can experience up to 80% higher growth in their revenue. That's why knowing this fact, we have narrowed our focus to helping entrepreneurs uh, get their business online as well. And to date, um, in Indonesia itself, we have trained more than 1.5 million um, businesses, SMBs, to go online. And we set another ambitious goal to train another million for the, by the end of next year. So not only SMBs, not only um, parents, educators, we also like focusing on developers who are using modern technology to reach um, their fullest potential. These programs, all the digital uh, literacy uh, skills training are now part of a global initiative at Google called Grow with Google, which can be accessed by anyone. So to conclude, I think um, my point is that I want to emphasize the importance of multi-stakeholder uh, collaboration here to strengthen digital ecosystem for better digital inclusion. The smart school online program that I mentioned before, for example, was well executed because of incredible uh, collaboration among stakeholders, which is in this case the private sector, uh, the government, the local CSOs, and also like local communities. And we have also learned that in some countries, local content and community level education is a huge part of the culture. And we really hope that we can continue to support it more. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I give the floor to Yossi. Check. OK, good afternoon, everyone. His Excellencies, Mr. Johnny. Um, actually, I'm a little bit nervous because this is my first time doing this. I think everyone's first time. Your first time, too? No, I'm supporting you. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm trying my best to deliver it in English because um, I prefer to sing, actually, than doing this. But I believe this is for, for the best of us and um, for making the, the better uh, digital governance for all of us. So um, I'm from Indonesia. I'm the head of Cyberkreasi. Cyberkreasi is a national movement on digital literacy. And um, actually, this screen is quite intimidating. I'm hoping I'm not spelling something wrong. And um, um, we are formed at the 2017. Um, going back to the history, I remember the day that was uh, in Indonesia is an era for the uh, Jakarta election for gubernatorial, yeah. And in the era, uh, we find that in the social media and internet, the growing of negative content and um, hoax, hate speech, and cyberbullying. But the other side of the coin, it's also motivate us to, to form the movement. So, um, Cybercreasi Yeah. Cybercreasi is a movement that including the member of 103 Okay. We have 103 members. There are CSOs, academics, business sectors, communities, um, and media and also we have 70s, around 70s uh, content creator, such as YouTubers or big account social media. And um, we are agreeing to collaborate in the name of Cybercreasi. It was intended to be an umbrella for the community-based and grassroots level movement on digital literacy. So uh, we, our activities is not only digital literacy, we also um, trying to make all the creators or content creators in Indonesia involving in the digital literacy. 
because uh, we need positive content also can support um, in making the good behavior for the for the nation for the people in the um, social media and um, we have a lot of um, activities through Indonesia we have school of influencers these activities is we going to the to, to, to places to cities in Indonesia and we talk to the audience mostly college and university talk about uh, we have a workshop seminar talk about how to make a good content and we also um, um, equip them with the skills and tell them to do a project uh, usually it's a positive content project and also we have um, yearly activities such as cyber creasy netizen fair is um, um, annual event which holds some conferences and workshops also but in the cyber creasy netizen fair we have this uh, cyber creasy awards so we are trying to make the appreciation system for the content creator so they are they feel appreciated because uh, they are making a positive content um, i know i don't know in your country is it the same problem or not but in indonesia content creator they don't really interested in making positive content because it doesn't give them any subscribers and viewers so um, we need to appreciate them more because the only appreciation they get is from the YouTube is by the subscribers. They get the silver button, gold button, and etc. So in the Cybercracy world, we are we pay attention for the their content and their commitment, and then uh, we give them uh, award for that. That's in a netizen fair, and also there's a lot of activities. This uh, Cybercracy TV is the one that we are going to develop on the 2020 because the members every members of cybercracy has content and we believe that we can can be used to help the digital literacy and um, we're going to put that on our website that's why we are working on our web website right now we're fixing it so the website can have the ability to to um, perform the cybercracy tv so this is our achievement and appreciations. Yeah, we have, like I said before, 103 members. We have already um, reached 462 locations uh, with the digital literacy program. And we have uh, 4,500 digital scouts have been appointed to become a digital literacy volunteer. 194,000 active participants that we have reached through the digital literacy. And we are also uh, making the, this um, digital, digital literacy series of books that can be downloaded for free in our websites. And it's already been downloaded for 182,000 times. So, and also we have already uh, received uh, 75 million Indonesian netizens receive education and outreach through the mainstream media and social media. The achievement is uh, we have national level awards from the Mark Plus as an Indonesian brand endorsement of the year. And also we are one of the champion in WSIS prizes 2018 by the United Nations International Telecommunication Union. So um, this is the pillar, digital content and lifestyle, digital parenting, digital economy, digital governance, digital talents, research and curriculum development. In uh, research and curriculum development, we are trying to make a model. So everyone who is the member of uh, Cybercreasy can have this model to to be to use they can use it to 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 the to the activities or their own uh, activities um, uh, so we have the same one the same way to do the digital literacy 
This also, we also preparing for um, curriculum for school. So uh, every student in Indonesia can um, have the digital li literacy in their school. We pre we're preparing for that and we also, um, um, can you can see as the digital content and lifestyle. This is, uh, this community, we, we need to maintain that because we believe through the video and to the creative content, we can make a, ve a very effective uh, education and also a very uh, interesting way to to deliver a digital literacy. Can we play one of the video for an example? Maybe, uh, yeah, this one is for against the, uh, to understand the hoax and not to share things. just an example you can check it in uh, our website <laughs> so uh, we believe like uh, the Millennials they don't really have that long focus attention when it comes to uh, digital literacy so we need to have a, a creative way to tell them and to teach them um, how to behave and how to react to the to the news to the Hawks and to the hate speech and cyberbullying also. So that's, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Yossi. And now I give the floor to Nana. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me. Could you please go back to the one but last slide, the one that had the pillars? Can we have the, the presentation back? That one. Yes, that's, that's one. Okay, can you look at this slide for a minute? Digital content and lifestyle is a man. Digital economy is a man. Digital governance is a man. Digital talent is a man. But fake news and hawks and digital parenting are women. I just want you to notice that as you go along. And this is one of the reasons, I don't know why you invited me, but I hope you are not going to regret it. Can you change that? Can you add a man and a woman in all places? Because parenting is for both of us. Lifestyle is for both of us. Digital economy, everybody is part of it. Governance is not a man's issue, and talents are everywhere. And men also tell lies online. All right, so I, I want to begin with that. I see Madam Moderator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see that our time is, is fast spent. I would like to call your attention on two things, because we are talking about inclusion. Um, yesterday, in the, in the big session on inclusion, I was speaking about meaningful connectivity. I have a particular interest on, on Indonesia, 
because it's a big country and because it's a diverse country and because it's a wide one. And it is very important that Indonesia shows leadership in one or two things. So I'm not going to make a presentation. I'm going to be asking questions. One, I said I will say two things. The first thing I want to talk about is meaningful connectivity for Indonesians, for the 260 million of them. And the other thing I have questions on is the civic space that allows citizens to thrive. So on the first part, on meaningful connectivity, I want to know do, how much does data cost? Do Indonesians have enough data on their phone? And how much does it cost? How much is one gigabyte per data in Indonesia? Uh, this is very important because, as I said earlier on, the one for two principle has been adopted by the Alliance for Affordable Internet and the UN Broadband Commission that one gigabyte of data that can last you for one month should not cost you more than 2% of the average income in that place. So on the question of data, I want to know how much does it cost to have one gigabyte that will last you for one month? What's the speed? What's the quality of service? Because for island countries, for a country as big as Indonesia, quality of service matters a lot. What is happening in country with the speed of connectivity? How well are the services? How well are people attended to when they have issues? Whether they are, whether they are in Jakarta or in Bali or in other small places. How frequently can people connect? Mr. Minister, um, I, before I came to this session, I was in another meeting with civil society organizations who fight internet shutdowns. And there have been internet shutdowns in Indonesia this year. I, I, you know that. Uh, how, how do you get to the decision of shutting down the internet? Do we have discussions? Do we, do we let citizens, is that the last resort? Or is this something that is getting regular and upstream? I'm talking about frequency of internet shutdowns in Indonesia. What are, what's the taxation like? Um, I'm happy to invite anyone who wants to see work that we have done on taxation. Because the vices, appropriate devices, coupled with good, undisrupted internet connectivity and adequate speed and affordable connectivity is what makes for meaningful connectivity. So if you want to bundle all of that in one question, it will be how meaningful is the connectivity that allows for inclusion of the 260 million people who live over in, in thousands of islands. How are the people developing themselves with this? I saw the, 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 the slides on those who are 2G connected, 3G connected, and 4G connected. I must, as a matter of honesty, tell us that 2G is dead and buried. It's not a technology for today. It's not a technology for tomorrow. So maybe we should stop saying uh, that those who have 2G, you can't do anything with 2G connectivity. So we need to move beyond that. So those are my questions that I'm, I'm hoping you will not regret bringing me here, but it's good we speak to those issues. I'm happy that you can say what is happening well, but we are also here to ask you questions about the things that are not going the way they should. So how meaningful is connectivity? And how inclusive is this working out really uh, on the ground? On the civic space, I very much love what Google does generally. However, when you give digital education, when somebody is equipped and the young person says, now I can do so many things. Now I can blog. Now I can have a space online to express myself. 
is there the, the security and the self-assurance and the respect of basic rights that allows the citizen to use the internet in a way that is good? I will take that question again. After you've got connected, after you have all of these things, we have, do you have the social right? Do you have the basic rights? Do you have the social security to be able to exploit them, to use the knowledge to be able to develop yourself in such a way that your rights are respected online and offline? Two days ago, Sir Tim Berners-Lee launched the contract for the web. We talked about responsibilities for government, industry, and citizens. And as we move along, we are looking for countries who show that they are resolute in making it work. Inclusive Indonesian digital society, not e-government. E-government is, gov is a one-way traffic, but digital governance is combining what both of you do. It's not just citizens to citizens or government to citizens. It's going to be an ecosystem. And um, from what I see, there is a drive to make that happen. However, my question is, what is your target? When do you want to get all Indonesians connected? When will their connectivity be meaningful? And when do we have the social right, the, the, the rights and the, uh, and the economic drive balanced. I will stop so far. Uh, I didn't do a presentation. I asked a lot of questions. Just in case you don't get an opportunity, we will still hear you more. Thank you very much for inviting me. Okay. Thank you, Nana, for, for the question. So I will, since uh, we need to keep time, so I'll let the minister answer first, and then we'll <laughs> go down the line. Thank you, Nena. First of all, that uh, I must uh, inform you that Indonesia now become the third largest democracy country in the world. We respect civil rights, and we do everything that we can do to support the civil rights. We are teaching Indonesian people to understand not only rights that they have, they also have the obligations to make sure that their rights are well protected by themselves and by the governments. In case of disobedience, civil disobedience, what should you do? What should the government do? In case of civil disorder, what should government do? But government has to stand and ensure the disobedience and the disorder has to be brought back to normal. So we do not shut down, but we reduce the speed to make sure that some people that want their civil rights are protected also may be supported by the government. We have been putting oh, billions of dollars for the investment of the digital infrastructure. You ask how this connect to the people. Please bear in mind, Indonesia is a very, very big archipelagic country. London to Rome, north to south of Indonesia. Six hours east to west flight. Yeah, you've been there. You can see that Indonesia consists of 17,000 islands. We have to connect these 17,000 islands through the infra digital infrastructure, fiber optics, land and sea. BTS, satellites, we will extend another 8,000 kilometer length of the 33,000 fiber optics that has been in place. 
we will put thousands of BTS more out of the 120,000 BTS which is now in place. We will put three more satellites, multifunction satellites, high throughput satellites out of five that now uh, telecommunication satellites that's already in service. It takes multi-billions of dollars. And by 2024, we do hope in the very remote area of Indonesia, the internet speed at least at 10 megabytes per second. And by 3035, 30 megabytes per second. In so doing, we hope that the farmers, the fishermen, the SMEs, the ultra-micro businesses can be connected to the marketplace. That's how we improve our Indonesian people to increase their GDP. Indonesia, as of today, is number six highest income per capita purchasing power parity. So we do all things to protect Indonesians' right for their economy, for their education, for their social life, and for their cultural life. As well, we protect Indonesian national interest. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'll give the opportunity to Mr. Anang to respond. OK. Uh, thank you. Ms. Nena, I just want to add more to answer your question regarding the price. Indonesia is one of the cheapest price of the quota, yeah, internet quota. <laughs> to have one gigabit quota, we have to pay less than one dollar, US dollar, every month. Yeah. And how meaningful about the broadband connectivity since the last five years that we already starting digital economy. It was starting from the cities, but it was growing very fast. Our task, Minister of Common Info, to make sure that in 2020, yeah, the 4G services also reaching the in village level so we can bring, we can bring the digital economy digital economy into the level into the village level thank you thank you and mas yosi would you like to respond to the slide no okay uh, ryan would you like to respond um, in which case then i'll open to the floor are there any questions yes sir please go ahead and, and uh, you next. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Haris, and I'm from Pakistan Universal Service Fund. Uh, I have a couple of uh, questions uh, regarding the Indonesian um, uh, telecom model. Uh, as I just uh, looked at the presentation, a um, the lot of money is spent on the rural areas for the digital side uh, to improve the economy. My first question would be, is it a subsidy based? And if it's a subsidy based, uh, how long the subsidy has been provided for? Uh, secondly, uh, you also mentioned that in co next couple of years, you'll be deploying a lot of satellites. Uh, I, is, is deploying satellite a cheaper way? Uh, or, I thought, or it's because of the location, like it's on the island or something where optic fiber is not uh, accessible or it's not easy to deploy. So I've got these two questions, if you can address it. Thank you. Thank you, and please go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, my name is Flix. I'm from Netherlands. Uh, so I'm working for the environmental stewardess, NGO. Uh, I would like to ask him, Mr. Minister, and also from the cyber creation, a uh, creation, sorry, and uh, Google. So basically, uh, I'm focused with the, for Mr. Minister, uh, nowadays in Europe, we are talking about the 5G, and then uh, yesterday we discussed about the, the effect of the 5G itself in the implement, and uh, is there any study 
from the minister uh, to see if the, the high-speed internet into the employment or the social, and then what's the effect, for example, uh, uh, example for the young kid, uh, they have very access to internet. Uh, so is there any like regulation, like which age uh, they can like access the internet and to provide, uh, to prevent them from the cyber bully. And for the cyber creation, uh, cyber creation, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, it's very interesting to see of a sick file, and, but I don't see about the employment here. Uh, is that, do you also working for the environmental issue because you know we concern about the smoke and the white fire in Indonesia and many things and how about uh, disaster do you also working on that you know especially your actress uh, uh, singer yeah? yeah so do you also encourage young people to be you know uh, more aware about disaster because you know Indonesia very sensitive with disaster also, and I'm I'm not really familiar about the cyber bully in Indonesia. Look like really worse according your tele, uh, your advertisement. So, uh, do you using your campaigns also to focus with the empowerment? Because you know now Indonesia in the world is look like Amazon because about the white fire in Borneo. And also for the Google itself, uh, you are focused with the cyber bully material. How about another material like uh, implemental material? And can they download it uh, and read it, it offline? I don't think all of the archipelago island in Indonesia can access uh, fully internet. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I am aware that there's another hand, but we're running out of time, so I'll let the minister to respond and then we can chat after offline. Thank you. Okay, the f my friend from uh, Pakistan, for sure, the, to put, deploy the satellites much more cheaper than to uh, put or to deploy the fiber optics. Uh, we are now remanage the frequency spectrum to make sure that there will be a spectrum available for 5Gs. So I will do whatever that I can do to allocate spec frequency spectrum for the 5G. At the moment, we have in the field the uh, 5G implemented, but we need prepare a good 5G spectrum, which is now ongoing. Uh, I think that's uh, the questions. And other questions we can discuss offline because we are running out of time. Thank you. Thank you, and the minister has the last word. So um, please give our panelists a round of applause, and thank you for all of you for joining us this afternoon.